Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, for your word. And we hook faith together tonight, everybody in the building, everybody watching online. And Lord, we're asking you tonight for revelation of your word. We're asking you tonight for insight and concepts into spiritual law and into the workings of your kingdom. And Lord, we thank you for helping each one of us to receive the fullness of what you have for us to receive. And Lord, we agree together asking you to give me the anointing and the ability to minister this word just the way you'd have me to. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. All right. James chapter 4, and we started a new series two weeks back. And it's entitled, Yield or Resist. Can you say that with me one time? Yield or Resist. Are there things in this life that you should yield to? Are there things in this life that you should resist? And uh, God gives us, in James chapter 4, verse 7, He gives us some insight into what we should be yielding to and what should we should be resisting. James chapter 4, verse 7, it says this, Therefore submit to God. That word submit means to yield, to comply with. Should you and I yield to God? <laughs> should we submit to Him? We should, shouldn't we? Why would God have to even put this in the Bible? Isn't this written to you and me, believers? Isn't the New Testament written to us? Well, why would, this, why would He have to tell believers to submit to Him? Why would He have to say that to us? Don't all believers submit to God? <laughs> Aren't all believers yielding to God? How about you? <laughs> could, could you yield any more than you're yielding? Right? So it's not automatic that just because you're a Christian that you're yielding to the Lord and doing the things that He's telling you to do. Jesus said this in Luke 6, 46. He said, why do you call me Lord, but you don't do the things that I say? You think any of that's going on today? <laughs> huh? See, if, if He's your Lord, then one of the biggest marks that He is your Lord is that you actually do what He says. <laughs> you actually yield to Him. So what he say? He said, submit to God. And what's the rest of the verse? Resist the devil. Should you yield to the enemy? <laughs> or should you resist him? You should resist him. And if you resist him, what is he going to do? He's going to flee from you. Right? See, things in your life that you want to get rid of, what do you have to do? You have to resist, right? Faith did it again this week. She used the old shoe on grace again. <laughs> Those of you who have been here the past couple weeks, you've heard that story. Shoe. Well, she has a revelation, doesn't she? And you can, you'll, you'll, you'll see that revelation if after the service, if you just try to get too close to her and she doesn't know you that well, you'll get a revelation of resistance. <laughs> and we're, we're correcting her about that. But she has an understanding that if I don't want you around then I'm going to resist you, right? How about with you and the devil and you and depression and you and fear and you and poverty or anger? If you want it to get away from you, you have to resist it, right? And not yield to it. And we're going to talk more about that in the coming weeks. But let's go back to the first part, submit to God. Can you resist the Lord? Can you? Can you resist him? Acts chapter 7 verse 51 talked about people who were resistant to the Holy Spirit. Do you know you can live your life in a constant state of resistance to the Lord? You know, the Lord tells you to, you know, wake up in the morning and spend time with me. But you don't. <laughs> and then he tells you to go to church. But you don't. And then, you know, has the Lord ever said, you ever got ready to say something? And before you were getting ready to say it, something on the inside, you said, don't say it. Don't, don't, don't say it. And then what did you do? <laughs> A lot of times you say it, right? And, and if you're not careful, you can live in this state of resistance to where you're not yielding to the Lord. You're not submitting to Him. And in that state of resistance, if you're not yielding to Him... Who are you yielding to? How many options are there in this verse? <laughs> so if you're not yielding to the Lord, what's left? People like to think, well, no, I'm, I'm not yielding to the Lord maybe, but 
I'm not yielding to the devil. I'm just kind of right in the middle. <laughs> there is no middle in this verse. If you're not yielding to the Lord, you're yielding to the enemy. And what me and you are, are and what the Lord's helping us to do in this series, and I, I believe it's going to, as you stick with it, it's going to grow and it'll develop. We're going to cultivate a yielding life, a yielded life, where we're saying yes to the Lord all the time. Whatever He tells us to do, we're doing it. Whatever, wherever He tells us to go, we're going. If He says we're healed, what do we say? I'm healed. If He says I'm free, what do we say? If He says I have joy, what do I say? I, I, I just feel so depressed. The doctor diagnosed me. It's clinical. Is that what you say if you're yielding to the Lord? No, you say, I have joy. <laughs> right? And we're, we're doing this in every area of our life. What does it mean? I was going to share this with you last week. What does it mean? I didn't get to it. What does it mean to be yielded to the Lord? Or really, you could say yielded to anybody. It means this. It means that you... To be yielded, yielding means that I am what He says I am. Is that yielding? I mean, if God says you're this, but you say you're that, are you yielding to Him? <laughs> you see, in one, one avenue of yielding? Huh? If God says I'm righteous, but I say I'm a sinner, am I yielding? Are, am, if I'm born again, am I a sinner? We need to deal with this. <laughs> Real quick, this is not my message, but this, we need to deal with this. I guess it is my message. Romans chapter 5. Let me read you a verse. You don't even have to go there. Just listen. Verse 8. But God commends His love towards us in that while we were, 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 <laughs> were yet sinners. When we were yet sinners. So what does were mean? Were means used to be. Now, why am I telling you this? Because people got this. I, I hear, I've heard Christians say it just in the last month. I heard, a, not, 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 a, not a preacher or a pastor you know, but I was in a pastor's meeting. And sure enough, we're all sinners. <laughs> if it wasn't my first time there, I might have spoke up. <laughs> no, I probably still wouldn't have spoke up. Not our job to go around correcting everybody. Are you a sinner? <laughs> Don't struggle with it. If Jesus is your Lord, you're saved by grace. You're the righteousness of God in Him. You are no longer a sinner. Huh? Come on, say amen to this. Now, if you say you are, and God says you're not, then are you yielding? You just need to say about you what He says about you. <laughs> right? God also says you're holy. What should you say about yourself? I'm holy. <laughs> I'm free. I, and is this part of yielding to him? It is, isn't it? So yielding to him is, I, I am what he says I am. I do what he says to do. Is that part of yielding? If he tells you to do this and you don't, you're not yielding. I, I do what he says to do. I believe what he says. Is that part of yielding? Believing what the Lord says. That, this is yielding, isn't it? I believe what the word says. I believe what God says. That's yielding. And then the fourth one is this. I say what He says. So what is yielding? I am what He says I am. I do what He says to do. I believe what He says. And then I say what He says. And that, that's living that yielded life. Say yielded. And you and I are, are, are cultivating this life where we're yielding all the time. Remember in Matthew 15, we looked at it a couple weeks ago, when, when the woman came to Jesus and wanted healing for her daughter, and Jesus said, it's not right for me to give the children's bread to the dogs. Jesus called her a dog, didn't he? <laughs> and what did she say? <laughs> she said, that's the truth. <laughs> Wouldn't it have been just a little bit funnier if she would have went, rough, rough, Jesus. A dog I am. And she said, but even the, the dogs eat the crumbs from the children's bread. And Jesus looked at her. He said, woman, <laughs> great is your faith. See, what made her faith great was her readiness to yield to anything he, he said. And her readiness to yield positioned her to receive her miracle. <laughs> you see where the Lord's going with this with you and me? 
our readiness to yield positions us for Him to do great things in our life. Anybody interested? I'm excited about this. Thank you, Lord. Now, let's go back to James chapter 4, verse 7. Let's put that on the screen. What is the end of the verse? The end of this verse is the devil fleeing from you and me. Anybody interested in that part? <laughs> well, don't skip the steps. Because <laughs> to get to that part, what's step one? Yield, submit to the Lord. And it's no wonder why, why so many Christians are having so many problems in their life. Because so many of them are paying no attention to the Lord. Are you going to have problems with the devil if you yield to him and resist the Lord? You will, won't you? We're going to get into some of this tonight. And, and uh, you know, whenever things happen in, in Christians' lives or, or even people's lives, the million-dollar question is, why did this happen to them? Right? You know, you've heard the question, why do bad things happen to good people? The better question is, well, why do bad things happen to people? <laughs> right? I mean, are you so good that you should be exempt from something bad happening? There's none good but God, right? So the question is, you know, why do bad things happen? And, and <laughs> it, it's, it's the million-dollar question, and there have been theological books written, and classes taught, and people come up with their own stuff and just make stuff up as they go. And a lot of times when something happens like that in, in church, you won't hear any mention of the devil. What you'll hear is, well, God allowed it. He had some purpose in it. We don't understand. And there's no mention of the devil. So some terrible thing happened. Stealing, killing, and destroying. And when it happened, Christians don't even talk about the devil. Well, who did it? And do you think the devil likes this, that when he's doing bad stuff, but you're blaming God for it? <laughs> he would just assume that you pretend like he doesn't even exist. Right? And it's the million dollar question. Why, why, why did this happen? And look, I don't pretend to have all the answers of why everything happened to every person, but the scriptures give us some answers on it, and we need to not ignore what the scriptures say. If you yield to the devil... Are you going to have problems with them? You are, aren't you? Now, last week we talked about, and, and we're going to continue with it tonight, why should, you, why should you and I yield? Let's put James 4, 6 on the screen. James 4, 6. Why should you and I yield? James 4, 6 says this. It says, God gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Last week we found out grace means help. So who's going to get the help? The hum humble in this verse means the yielding. So the ones that yield to God get help from God. And that is one of the most amazing things you'll ever experience when God helps you. You know, you're struggling, you don't understand, you can't seem to get through, you can't seem to get over, and when God shows up to help, you don't struggle anymore. It's one of the most amazing things that can happen in your life for God to show up and say, let me help you with that. And when He helps you, you get through, right? You don't struggle. And this is what we talked about last week, who gets the help? The ones that yield get the help, and that's why verse 7 started with the word, therefore. Therefore, yield to God. Why? Because the ones that yield get the help. Anybody interested in getting some help? Now, go with me to Romans chapter 6, and I want to talk about another reason tonight why you and I should yield. Romans chapter 6, in verse 16, it says this. Everybody doing okay so far? Anybody interested in yielding some more? <laughs> getting some more help? Seeing the devil get away from you. This is all good stuff, isn't it? Now, Romans 6, 16 says this, Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are, 
to whom you obey. Is it true that whoever you yield to, the word obey means yield to, whoever you yield to, you become a servant of. This is what the verse is saying. Easy, Romans chapter 6, verse 16 is where we're at. The easy to read says this, you become the slaves of whatever you give yourselves to. Anything or anyone you follow will be your master. The Phillips translation says, you belong to the power which you choose to obey. So the principle in this verse is this, that whomever you yield to, you give place to rule over you, and you give them authority in your life to carry out their will and plan for you. If I yield to you, you become my master. And what that means is you have place and you have authority in my life. Yielding to gives one place over. So if I yield to you, you now have place, you now have authority in my life to come in and do what you want, carry out your will and your plan. Do you see this? Um, the Passion Translation says this, grace frees you to choose your own master. Can you choose your own master? Is God making anybody submit to him or yield to him? What did James 4, 7 say? It said, submit yourself. So God is not going to come and just control people and make them do what he wants. I need to say that again. God is not going to just come and control people and make them do what he wants. It's not how he works. And it said, grace frees you to choose your own master, but choose carefully. For you surrender yourself to become a servant bound to the one you choose to obey. Do you need to be careful to who you yield to? Do you need to be careful about who I yield to? And why do I need to be careful? Because whoever I yield to, I give them place in my life to do what they want. Are you seeing this? Now, what does Satan want to do in your life? He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And so if I yield to him, then I give him place to come in and carry out his plan and his will for my life. Are you seeing this? I give him place. And so we need to be, we need to be careful who we yield, yield to. We need to be aware. Who am I yielding to? Do you know every day you got a choice of who you yield to, right? Every second of every day. Do you need to be aware of who you're yielding to? And do you need to be cautious of who you yield to? You do, don't you? Why? Because whoever I yield to, I give them place in my life. So how about this? Whoever you want to have place in your life, come on, if you want somebody to have place, what do you need to do? You need to yield to them, right? If you want God to have place in your life, to come into your life and do what he wants to do, what does God want to do in your life? He wants to come into your life and he wants to give you life and give it to you abundantly and he wants to help you and he wants to favor you and he wants to care for you and he wants to keep you, sustain you, right? All your life long. Anybody interested in him doing that? How does he get to do that? You have to yield to him and give him place if he's going to do that, Right? Is he just doing this for everybody? Is he doing this for every Christian? How come? Doesn't want to? Don't yield, right? Don't yield. Um, go with me to 1 Peter chapter 5, and we'll get into this some more tonight. Is the Lord helping you? Whoever you want to have place in your life, you must yield to. <laughs> a lot of people, they want God to, um, they ask God to do something for them 
but they don't want to yield to Him. They want God to come into their life, and they want God to bless them, and they want God to take care of them, and they want God to keep them and protect them, but they don't want to do anything He says. Are you seeing this? Wanting God to do something good for you is not the same as yielding to Him. And if you and I want Him to have place in our lives, we must yield. Whoever you don't want to have place in your life, what must you do? Resist. Resist. And if you resist, whoever you resist, they won't have place. Whoever you yield to, they will have place. You know, there's people walking the earth today that don't even believe there's a God that will mock people like you and me and what we believe and put their nose up at us and laugh at the idea of heaven. And, you know, is God, does God have any place in their life? So what is he able to do? Nothing. Nothing. You know, there's a whole other group of people that are not yielding to the enemy one iota. They're not doing what he says. They're not following him. <laughs> They're not yielding to him. How much place does he have in their life? None. That's going to be you and me, right? Now, 1 Peter chapter 5, and this is where I want to get into this tonight. 1 Peter chapter 5. And I want to ask this question. Don't answer. Let's just listen. <laughs> I say that now because there's times in service I ask a question and people start answering wrong. <laughs> so just listen and I'll maybe ask it again later and you can get it right later. Um, is God and are the devil, are they just doing whatever they want in people's lives, independent of, of the people and what they yield to? Is God just showing up in people's lives and doing what He wants? And is the devil, is, is he just showing up in somebody's life and just doing whatever he wants? Why am I saying this? Because this is what a lot of people think. A lot of people think, well, God's God. He's going to do what He wants in my life. If He wants to do something, He's going to do it. Where's the verse? And, and this, is what we're, this is the direction we're heading tonight. Why do you want to yield to God? Because when you yield to Him, you give Him place. And we touched on it a little bit last week, but we want to go a little further tonight. 1 Peter chapter 5, and let's look at, um, we'll actually read down through this some. And let's see if you can find any familiar verses in here. 1 Peter 5, look at verse uh, 5. It says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourself to the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud... And gives grace to the humble. Do you, are you seeing this again? <laughs> so what does it say? It says, humble yourselves, therefore under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. This verse right here is painting the picture of what we touched on already tonight. Humble yourself, yield. Say it again, yield. Yield to His hand, to His authority. Why? Because He wants to exalt you. He wants to lift you up. And put you in a high place. And put you in a good place. And put you in a safe place. Is this what God wants to do? But what was the first part of the verse? Yield. Humble yourself. By yielding to Him, you give Him place to exalt you. It says there's in verse 7, Casting all of your care upon Him, for He cares for you. Come on, if you're walking around worried all day, are you yielding to Him? So can he help you? <laughs> no. You have to stop worrying to get the help. Now verse 8 is what we're going to look at. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Now what were the, the instructions in the first part of the verse? Be sober. And be vigilant. Say that. Sober and vigilant. Sober is this idea of your... It's not just talking about don't be drunk. It's, that's where, how we use the word sober. It's talking about be calm, be collected, be cool. And not emotional. Not given to your emotions. One, one word I looked up when I was looking up this word is dispassionate. That means unmoved by your feelings. Is this important? That you and I be calm, 
<laughs> cool, not freaking out, not angry, not... Is, is this important? Now, why is it important? Because so often when you yield to a wrong emotion, who else are you yielding to? The devil. And you're giving him place in your life. That's why in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, it said, Be angry. Somebody said, I got that verse down. I'm angry all the time. <laughs> I'm great at that. Well, read the rest of the verse. Be angry and sin not. So it's not, not telling you don't feel angry. It's telling you don't allow that emotion of anger to cause you to yield to the enemy because yielding to the enemy gives him place. Come on, say this with me. Be calm. Actually, let's turn it around like this. I am calm. <laughs> I'm cool. Collected. Not emotional. Not emotional. Being overly emotional makes you extremely vulnerable. Overly emotional. You know, you freak out about everything. <laughs> Amber, a couple months back, I was... Uh, um, I, I, I don't know what was going on. Something was, maybe it was last year now. I don't know how long ago it was, but um, some stuff was going on, just ministry stuff, you know, just normal type of stuff. And uh, I, I found myself becoming discouraged so quickly, so just weak, <laughs> just like, you know, just something happens and then I'm just discouraged about it. And, and the way I get discouraged is, I just shut down and don't talk and have a mad look on my face, right? Which is not any better than anything else, or worse. And, and I told Amber, I, I, I was reading some books and doing some studying, and I, I was telling her, I said, you know, I, I feel so weak sometimes. Like, I just, I just feel like I give in so easy to this pressure, just being emotional. And she goes, I know. <laughs> Because she sees me being discouraged. And I said, I, I need to stop that. That's just being weak. It's being emotional. And who am I yielding to? And this is the big issue. And who am I giving place to? And, and you want to honestly know where I got the revelation? I was reading this Navy SEAL book. <laughs> and, uh, and this guy in this book, he, he was talking about, when he was, he was teaching in the book that, when something tough happens or something rough happens, he just says, good, good. If it did, the mission broke down, good. We got an opportunity to learn how to do something new, good. Huh? The supplies aren't there, good. We got an opportunity to be creative, <laughs> right? It, it, it's not being given to emotions. Now, that, that mentality was actually taken out of the Bible. He stole it from the Bible. He doesn't know, but... Because the Bible's the first one that said, be sober, right? Not given to your emotions. If you're emotional, you're going to be quick to yield to the wrong emotion. You need to be cool. <laughs> Do you know who was so cool? Just go read the Gospels and try to find a time where you ever saw Jesus fret. <laughs> Remember when the, when the hurricane hit the boat? Sometimes we can just read over that, that a great storm of hurricane proportions hit the boat. And we kind of just think, yeah, great. No, no, picture it. They're in a boat made of wood in the middle of a hurricane. And you know where Jesus was? Cool. <laughs> Taking a nap. And then, you know, they came to kill Jesus. They all had their stones. Or they, I'm sorry, this was the, the woman that was caught in adultery. They all had their stones, and they're questioning Jesus, and they're getting ready to kill her, and they're getting ready to discredit him. And they ask Jesus this question, and Jesus bends down and starts writing in the dirt. He's just cool, isn't he? <laughs> I don't mean like cool like hip. I mean calm. Just, just collected. <laughs> Is this important for me and you? And what, what's the rest of this verse said? It said, be sober. Why? Because you have an adversary roaming around looking to devour. And if you're too emotional and you yield to the wrong emotion, you're going to yield to him and you're going to give him place. <laughs> do, you, do you and I need a revelation about how to be a little tougher? <laughs> 
oh, we're going to get into some of it in, on Sunday. We're doing a series and, and going forward. Do we need to learn how to be a little tougher and not be such babies? <laughs> now, listen, don't tell somebody else that. Tell yourself that, <laughs> right? Toughen up. Suck it up. You know, one night, I, I'll just be a little transparent. One night I got all discouraged, probably four or five months back, because we had a service, and there was like three people here. Three. Where were you that night? <laughs> three. And I'm thinking, <laughs> you know, I'm just, <laughs> what am I doing? Being a baby. Being too emotional. Good. Another opportunity to persevere through some adversity. Right? Can you develop this kind of mentality? And if you did, you wouldn't be yielding to the enemy. You would be yielding to the Lord, and the Lord would have place and not your adversary. Come on, say it again. Be sober. <laughs> be sober. Um, and what was the other part? Oh. The, uh, one other thing that this word sober means, it means this, be aware of the consequences of a measure. Be aware of the consequences of a measure or an action that you take. It's being aware. So that night, if I could rewind and go back, and I can't, <laughs> but when, when there wasn't very many people in the service, I sh I, if I was sober... I would have not been emotional. I would have been aware. Okay, what's going on right now? If I yield to discouragement and depression, what is the consequence of that measure, that action? Because it's my choice. Well, the consequence and the measure of that action is I'm actually yielding to my enemy and I'm giving him place in my life to do what he wants. See why you, got, you can't be emotional about this stuff? Huh? Don't be emotional. Be surgical. <laughs> with the enemy get your sword out and cut him up right you need to be you need to be aware if i yield if if i if i do yield to this this thought this feeling this circumstance what what's the consequences of that measure who am i letting in be sober say it again be sober and what was the other word be vigilant say that vigilant Vigilant means be on the watch. It means to be on the guard, be awake. And it, it means this, you do that, you're on the watch so that, I'll, I'll just read to you how it's on my notes, be on the watch lest through relaxation and laziness or the love of ease, some destructive calamity would overtake you. Can you just let your guard down? And just relax for a second and then something overtake you that shouldn't. You know, when, we were, when I was in high school, uh, particularly in football season, I remember this, we would play teams that their record would be like one in four. And we all knew they were terrible. <laughs> and we were really good. We, we were good. We were undefeated both years in the regular season. We were good. And all week, the way the coaches would talk about the team you were playing, it felt like you were getting ready to play the New York Giants. And they would have it all mapped out about how, well, really, they're one and four, but if a few things could happen, they'd be five and oh. And they'd have us all believe in it. You know why? Because they didn't want us to relax. Didn't want us to let our guard down. Huh? Didn't want us to get lazy, because that's how you get hit. Are you seeing this? This in the voice translation of this verse, it says this. It says, be disciplined and stay on guard. Is that how most Christians are living? Huh? Discipline and on the guard? And, and I'll, let's go back to our question. So, because you're, they're not disciplined and not on the guard, are they vulnerable? Are they susceptible to being devoured? Huh? Overly emotional, unaware not on the watch, not disciplined, just going through the motions. You're getting ready to get clipped. And God has nothing to do with it. <laughs> it's who you yielded to. Not you and me, though, right? <laughs> not you and me. Not us. Come on, say it. Not us. <laughs> not me. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Um, 
The CV says, be on the guard, stay awake. The Message Bible says, keep a cool head and stay alert. Be careful and watch out for attacks. You need to be aware every day that you wake up in the morning that there's an adversary out there that's trying to steal, kill, and destroy in your life. This is all he thinks about, is devouring you. <laughs> Somebody said, that doesn't make me feel real good. <laughs> um, hey, did you know that every verse you read is not going to make, you, make your feelings and your flesh go, yippee? Did you know that? I mean, you'd be surprised by people. I mean, people, I mean, people act like you can't say anything in church that doesn't make people feel good. Otherwise, they won't come back. Well, don't come back. Go somewhere else then. But in here, we're going to get trained and get the truth because you know what the truth will do? It'll make you free. And you know what feels real good? Being free. <laughs> so I'm sorry it didn't make you feel real good, but just, just yield, right? Yield. Just say, yeah, Lord, you're right. I, I do. I got an adversary. And I, when I roll out of bed in the morning, I need to realize I'm in a fight. And there's, some, there's, there's an enemy out there that would like to just destroy everything in my life. Do you need to have, have this awareness and this reality? And do you need to be on the watch? You do, don't you? Is the devil real? <laughs> you, you know, you, you go in some churches and you won't hear about the devil all year. Why? Well, we don't, we don't like to talk about the devil because that kind of makes people uncomfortable. Well, you know what's uncomfortable? Getting whooped by the devil is going to be more uncomfortable than just hearing about him in church. Is this what God said? Did God say, just pretend like the devil doesn't exist? Is this what this verse is saying? Let's just act like he doesn't even exist. No, what's he say? He said, be, be on the watch. Be aware. Why? Because there really is a devil. He really wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And we shouldn't pretend like he's not out there. Hmm. we shouldn't live our life like, well, he's, no, he's there. He's there, and he wants to devour. Now, you don't need to talk about the devil all the time, and you don't need to be afraid of him. <laughs> Are you hearing this? But you need to be aware. Not afraid, just aware. I'm not afraid of him. I have authority over him. You know how easy he is to get rid of? Just resist him. And it's already been predetermined. It's spiritual law. He will flee. He's not hard to get rid of. Just resist him. <laughs> I, did, I did resist him, but it feels like he's still around. Just keep resisting. Right? Let's go, let me go back 10 minutes. Toughen up a little. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. But I'm not just on you. But toughen up a little. I don't care if it feels like he's around. I'm resisting you. It's time for you to get to going, right? So I'm not afraid of him. In fact, Isaiah 14 says, when you see him in the last day, you're going to go, this is the one? <laughs> you're not going to be impressed with what you see. So let's by faith right now, let's peer into the future and let's not be impressed right now. There is nothing impressive about him. And I don't need to be afraid of him. And I also don't need to treat him like like he can't do something in my life because he can, but I'm going to be aware because there's a real devil, right? And many are living their lives you would, like there is not one. They, they're, not getting, they're not getting any training about spiritual things. They're not, getting, they're not learning about how to walk in victory over him. They're just kind of going about, about their life. Do you and I need to be aware every day the adversaries out there he wants to steal, kill, and destroy. <laughs> but the thing about it is, I have the Word of God, the armor of God, the blood, the name, and the Spirit, <laughs> and he's not going to get me today because I'm not going to yield to him. And if I don't yield to him, he doesn't have any place in my life. Are you seeing this? Let's go to Job chapter 1, and I'll read this verse here. Job chapter 1. What is the enemy doing every day? <laughs> when, when he doesn't wake up, he's a spirit, but what is the devil doing all the time, with all his time? A lot of times people think that he's, he's just stealing, killing, and destroying and creating havoc anywhere he wants to, anytime he wants. Well, that, that's not true. I mean, 
the world is not in good shape, but if he had his way, it'd be in worse shape, right? If he had his way with every person on the planet, this place would be, <laughs> well, exactly what it'd be, it'd be a hell hole, wouldn't it? <laughs> huh? So he, he's not, he's not um, doing everything he wants. He's not just stealing, killing, and destroying any time he wants. So what is he doing? 1 Peter 5, 8 said that he's seeking whom he may devour. Here's a reality most don't know. That before he devours, he seeks. Say seeking. seeking. He's looking, isn't he? And this in Job chapter 1, and uh, in verse 5, Job chapter 1, verse 5, this is such a, a good picture of what he's doing. Now I can tell I'm not going to get all the way through what I got here tonight. So we're going to change the title of the message. <laughs> that the reason that you want to yield to the Lord is not only do you just want to give the Lord place, which we'll probably talk about next week, you don't want to give the enemy place. This is why you're yielding, to shut the enemy out. Now, Job chapter 1, verse 5, it says this. Job 1 and 5, it says, well, I, I, not, not verse 5, verse 7. Verse 7 says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Where do you come from, or from where did you come? What are you doing is, is what some other translations probably say. What, what are you doing out there? It said, Satan answered the Lord and said, from going, to, from going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down it. What's he doing? He's roaming, isn't he? Just the way we found in 1 Peter 5 eight. He's walking about, roaming. And it says this, and the Lord said, you've considered my servant Job. God picked up on the fact that the enemy... People read this verse like this. Have you considered Job? <laughs> Looking for somebody to devour? How about Job? Give him a shot. God's not doing that. Job was a righteous man who feared God and hated evil. He's saying, you've considered my servant Job, one that's upright before me. And look what Satan says in verse 8. Satan said, you've considered my servant Job. Or this is the Lord. Verse 9. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? I want you to get a picture of this. What's the enemy doing? He's roaming and he's seeking whom he can devour. And he gets up to Job and, he, and did you notice the enemy knew that he knew a lot about that hedge, didn't he? <laughs> he knew it was around Job. He knew it was around his house, and he knew it was around all that he had. How would you know that hedge was around Job, all that, his house, and all that he had? Because he had been around that hedge. Are you seeing this? What's he doing? He's casing the place, and he's going around, and he comes over here, and he can't find a way. What's he doing? He's looking for a way in. Are you seeing this? This is what he does. He's looking for a way in. And he found none with Job. Isn't that good news? Is this what he's doing in your and my life? Has he changed? Does Satan have any new things that he's trying with you? No, same thing. He's looking for what? He's looking for a way in. He's seeking whom he may devour. Now Ecclesiastes 10.8 says that he that breaks the hedge... A serpent will bite him. So see, when the hedge is broken, that's when the serpent can bite. How come, he, how come he couldn't bite Job up until this point? Because there's a hedge there. He can't find a way in. Friend, this should be exciting to you and me. Do you know that there are times where the enemy is looking for place, looking for a way in, and can't find any? <laughs> Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Let me read you a verse over there. Ephesians chapter 4. He knew about that hedge. Why? He's been all around it, trying to get through, trying to get in, but he can't find place. He can't find a way in, and because he couldn't find a way in, he couldn't bite, he couldn't devour. And why? Because Job, up until that point, wouldn't yield to him, wouldn't give him place. He was a, ri a righteous man. He feared God. He hated evil. Is he a man that's yielding to the Lord? 
And because he's yielding to the Lord, God was able to come into Job's life. And did the Lord do some stuff for Job? Job was the richest man in the east, and Job had a hedge around all of his stuff. Why was God able to do that for him? Because he was yielding to the Lord and giving the Lord place to come in and do those good things. Um, Ephesians 4.26 Come on, but when the hedge is down, what's the serpent going to do? He's going to have a way in, and he's going to devour. What's the enemy looking for? He's looking for a way in. Why? Because if he can get a way in, he can devour. But he's not going to devour you or me. Do you know what the, you know the scripture said? He's seeking whom he may devour. So there are some that he comes to that he may not devour. <laughs> I heard a preacher say this once, so I'm going to say it. I like it. Say this with me. I'm a may not. <laughs> may not devour me. Does he come to people like Job still today and he can't find a way in? He does, doesn't he? And that's what it's talking about in Ephesians 4, 26. It says, be angry. We quoted this before. And do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Now, if you sin, sin is yielding to your enemy. That's what it is. It's yielding to your adversary. Sin lets him in because it's yielding to him. A lot of times people have the wrong idea about sin. The Lord said this to me today. I just really enjoyed it. They have the wrong idea about sin. Sin is not about you do bad, so God is mad, and then does something bad to you. That, that's, that's not what's going on. Do you remember when it said the wages of sin is death? Remember that verse? It's not because God sees you sin and then goes, you need some death and hits you with it. That's not what, that's not what sin is about. Sin is about who you yielded to, who you gave place to, and what they want to do in your life. Sin is yielding to the enemy and it's resisting and shutting God out. Well, what is going to be the result or the wage of that? The cost of that is the destruction and the death that the devourer brings. It's not God getting mad and punishing you. It's you yielding to one that wants to punish, that wants to hurt. Are you seeing this? And that helped me today. I, I just, I enjoyed that. Sin lets him in. Look what it says in verse 27. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath, nor... Give place to the devil. The, the, key, the other King James Version of this says that don't, do not give place to the devil. Can, can you shut the devil out of your life? The word place means room. It means an opportunity to work. It means occasion for acting. Can you shut the devil out of your life? If the scripture said don't give him place, then you have the ability to shut him out and not give him place. And if it says don't give him place, then it also means that you can give him place. You can give him place in your life. What's the, what's the admonishment? Don't give him place. How would you give him place? Through the sin in the last verse, by, by yielding to him, you give him place. If you get angry and you let it move you into sin and you yield to him, then you give the enemy place in your life and you don't have to. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to 1 John 5.18. I think we'll close with that one. 1 John 5.18. You're flipping there. Lauren, put to 1 Peter 5, verse 9 on the screen. We'll put verse 8 and we'll read down into verse 9. Sin lets him in, yielding to him. Come on, why, why do you want to yield to the Lord? Because when you yield to the Lord, you're not yielding to the enemy and you're shutting him out. And look what this says. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, rocks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Now, what's the answer to, to him walking around trying, looking for who he can devour? What's the answer to this? See the verse? <laughs> what's the answer? He's looking, he's out there, he wants to devour you tomorrow. What is the remedy? What, it, what is the answer? How are you going to keep from being devoured? Resist. See, there's something that hinders him from finding a way in and devouring. Right? Because he's looking for whom he may devour. So there's some people he may not devour. So there's something 
that hinders him from coming in and devouring. And you know what it is? Resisting. Resisting him. Why? Because when you resist him, you're not yielding to him. You're not giving him place. So he's on the outside looking in, wanting to get into your life, but he can't. Is this where he was with Job? He's casing Job's whole life, looking for a way in, and he can't find a way in. Anybody getting excited about this? Could he do this with you? Where he's trying to get into your life and steal, kill, and destroy him. He goes to God and he goes, well, you put a hedge around him. And God goes, I know, I'm in the hedge business. <laughs> and, and let's just talk about this for a second. Is that hedge real? Could God really set you up? My God, put a hedge around you, bless you, and then when he comes to devour and he bumps his head on that hedge? <laughs> how, do you, how, do you, how do you get into this type of position? You have to resist the enemy and yield to God. And, and, and the harsh truth is, again, there have been theological books. You could probably fill this whole room with theological books and thoughts about what people think about happened to, what happened to Job. You want to know why that happened to Job? Because he went from resisting the enemy to yielding to him. Doesn't make him a bad person. He yielded. Remember in Job chapter 3 when he said, the thing that I feared the most came upon me? He said, I was not quiet. I was not at rest. I, 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 was not, I was not at ease, I think one version said. What's he saying? I was worrying. I wouldn't rest. I wouldn't be still. And yet, trouble came. Well, when he's yielding to the fear, who is he yielding to? The devil. And the devil came in and devoured like he wanted to do. It's the harsh truth, but it's true. That's why it happened. Not because God wanted it to. Not because it was God's plan. Not because it was God's will. Not because there was some purpose in it that Job needed to learn something. Because he yielded and gave place. But there are those that the enemy comes to and can't get in. There are those that he has no place. How about, um, <laughs> how about the three Hebrews? Anybody remember, remember those guys? And the enemy was trying everything he could to devour them and to kill them. And he took it so far that he had them standing in the middle of fire and he still couldn't get through. <laughs> you know why? They wouldn't yield. They wouldn't bow. What they said is they said, God said he's going to deliver us. So you know what we say? He's going to deliver us. That's yielding. And the yielding gave God place to come into their life and hedge them in in the middle of that fire. <laughs> can it happen for you? Yes. Remember when Peter was walking on the wall? Right, let me go back one. Remember when they came to kill Jesus? They all had their stones, right? They got them surrounded, and there's a cliff this way, and a crowd of people that want to kill you that way. You know what Jesus did? <laughs> Walked through the middle of them. And they said, where did he go? <laughs> Do you know why? That was a hedge of invisibleness. That cannot be a word, but I'm going to use it. <laughs> It's a hedge. Can't get in. Can't get in. And, and when Peter was walking on the water to go to Jesus, there was a time where the enemy couldn't get through, wasn't there? He was walking on the water. We like to be hard on Peter because he fell, but only two people in the history ever walked on water. <laughs> Peter and Jesus. And as long as he was yielding to the master, he was hedged in, wasn't he? Satan was looking for a way in and at first didn't find one. But then when he began to yield to fear, who's he yielding to? He's yielding to the enemy, and now Satan has place to, to devour, to cause him to fail. Thank you, Lord. 1 John 5, 18, and we'll close with this one. Come on, anybody interested <laughs> in being hedged in? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm interested in Satan bumping into my head so much, next time I see him, he's got a bruise on his head. <laughs> can't get in. How, 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 who gets that kind of life? The ones that are going to yield to the Lord and not yield to Him. And if you do get caught yielding to Him for a moment, you know what you need to do? You need to repent. And you need to ask God to forgive you. And you need to get it under the blood. And you need to say, oh Lord, forgive me. I yielded for a moment, but you know, I, I'm, <laughs> I missed it. I made a mistake. And the Lord says, it's okay. It's washed by the blood. You're back in the hedge. Are you seeing this? 
It's not about being perfect because you're not going to be perfect. <laughs> Was that revelation to you tonight? You might make a mistake before the end of tomorrow. I don't, I don't know. You know, there might be something you do that you shouldn't do. It's not about being perfect. It's about living a yielded life. And part of living a yielded life is when you do make a mistake, you know what you do? You yield and repent. <laughs> and then when you feel guilty, you yield and you say, no, I'm not guilty, I'm righteous. It's just yielding on every turn. Even when you don't yield, it's turning right back around and yielding. And this is how you get protected. This is how you get hedged in. Verse 18 says, we know that whosoever is born of God does not, does not sin. Does not what? Does not yield to the enemy. One, one translation says, does not practice sin. That's a good translation. Doesn't mean that a person that sin, is born of God is never going to miss it. Otherwise, God wouldn't have had to tell you, if you sin, when you sin, um, if, you, if you sin, confess your sins. What's that saying? First John 1, 9. Um, let me go. Um, confess your sins, and he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. God wouldn't have had to tell you that if he didn't think that you might not make a mistake. You wouldn't need to know that, Right? And so you're not, it's not talking about somebody that is born to God and never makes, never violates. And what is sin? Sin is violation of light. It's, not, it's knowing to do good and not doing it. It's doing something you knew you shouldn't have done. It's not doing something you knew you should have done. That's sin. Are you seeing this? And it's, say, it's saying the person that's born of God doesn't practice yielding to the enemy. Why? Because if Jesus is your Lord, then you should be interested in yielding to Him. So whoever's born of God doesn't yield to the enemy. But he that is born of God keeps himself. Keeps himself. How do you keep yourself hedged in? You yield, right? By yielding, you can keep yourself in that hedge. <laughs> and what about, what about it? What, what, what does the rest of us say? And the wicked one. <laughs> cannot touch him anybody interested in not being able to be touched i don't know whenever i read this verse i always hear the song can't touch this i see him see hammer in his pants doing his his little thing <laughs> that's what you and me are doing in the spirit tonight i'm not going to yield to you devil i'm not going to yield to a negative thought you bring i'm not going to yield to a negative feeling you bring i'm not going to give you any place in my life i'm not going to bow my knee to you and give you access and give you place because I'm aware that you are out there and you're going to, why do you think, listen, why do you think that you work with that person that you can't stand? Why? Because the enemy's trying to use that to get you in the flesh, to get you in strife, to get you to yield to him so that you'll ha he'll have place. Huh? Why do you think that Wednesday night when it's time to go to church, you, all these feelings of just tiredness come on you? And then you have this thought, you, you envision it, you see yourself in the bed with your pajamas on and it's warm and you, you see the popcorn next to you and the cookies that you're going to make and the show you're going to watch, you see it, you have, this, you have this vision. Because the enemy wants you to yield to that, yield to him. And you need to be aware every day that he's trying to get you to bow. And you know what you need to practice saying to him? It's real simple. No. <laughs> no, I'm not going to think on that. No, I'm not going to yield to that. No, I'm not going to get in strife. No, I'm not going to. It works good. Try it. Just say it when I. No. <laughs> no. You know what no means? No means I'm not yielding. And when you live that life like that, you actually leave him on the outside looking in wanting to devour, wanting to destroy, but can't find place. Is it good news? Anybody interested in doing some more yielding <laughs> to the Lord? Stand to your feet with me tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Everybody just bow your heads and close your eyes for just a moment here. Let's let the Lord seal this in our hearts, in our minds. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, Father, we thank you for your word tonight. You met us here. And Lord, we're so gracious for the revelation, for the, for the light, for the truth. And we make a decision tonight that we're going to submit to you. We're going to yield to you. We're going to resist the devil. 
and we're going to see him flee in every area of our life. And we give you thanks for it tonight. I want you to stay this with me tonight as we're, as we're closing here. And when we do things like this in service where, where you repeat after me, we're releasing faith. We're making declarations and decisions for, for your future. So let's not do this just religiously. Do this from your heart. Mean what you say. Say this with me. Father, in Jesus' name, I make decision tonight to submit to you and to resist the devil. And I put the enemy on notice. I will give him no place. I will give him no access. I will not yield to any negative thought, any negative feeling, any negative emotion. I will not yield to my adversary. I will give him no place. And Satan, tonight, you stand on the outside looking in and I'm hedged in by my heavenly Father. He's protecting me, keeping me, sustaining me, and I give the enemy no place. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you say amen?